Hey folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraven U here for another direct to YouTube special. This one brought to you by Dustin R, who donated to see an Arclight Phoenix deck in action. So in case you're not familiar with this one, it's a 3-2 flying haste, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you cast three or more instant and sorcery spells this turn, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. So the idea with Arclight Phoenix is you dump it into your graveyard either via something like Entomb or Careful Study or even Cabal Therapy or Thought Seize if you get a little bit desperate. And in fact, let's let's get those Thought Seizes on screen. Come hang out over here. And then you bring them back. This deck is full of cantrips. So the idea is you just roll like cantrip, cantrip, cantrip or something of that ilk to bring these things back. This is not an all-in Phoenix deck. We're not going like Dark Ritual Buried Alive. We're looking to play a slightly slower and slightly more resilient game than that. We can set up the Phoenixes in a number of ways, but the Phoenix isn't the only thing we're trying to set up. Another thing that's real good if you play four spells is Thing in the Ice. So this enters with four ice counters, and whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you get to take one of them off. If it has no instant or no ice counters on it, then you get to turn it into a 7-8 monstrous Kraken Horror, and it returns all non-horror creatures to their owner's hand. Uh, notably with this deck, that does mean if you have something like a Bloodgast or a Phoenix in play, those aren't horrors, so those will be bounced back to your hand as well. Now, this deck has a decent amount of graveyard interactions with like the Blood Gas, the Arc Light Phoenixes, and the Cabal Therapies, which means that you can expect things like Rest in Peace to come in from the sideboard. Luckily, we're pretty good at fighting that, because we have sticky threats like Clothis and the real annoying to answer enchantment, Aria of Flame, which sees a decent amount of play in Modern from time to time. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you put a verse counter on it, and then it deals damage equal to the number of verse counters on it to target player or planeswalker. So if you're just going like brainstorm, ponder, manamorphose, some other dirtily spell in your turn cycle, that damage adds up real quick. Now, notably, Aria of Flame does give the opponent 10 life when it enters the battlefield, but you'll melt through that pretty darn quickly. Now, the donor said they're pretty comfortable with where the main deck is at, but they still have one question. They're not really sure which one of these things is better, the Thought Scour or the Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time is really great on turn one, but a little bit worse later. And the Thought Scour is sort of a high variance thing. Sometimes you mill a Blood Gas, an Art Like Phoenix, a Cabal Therapy, and you get sick value out of it. And other times it's decisively eh. Notably, you can use it to uh, do some pretty cute things with Brainstorm. Like the dream scenario there is like you brainstorm, you put two phoenixes on top of your library, you thought scour them away, you cast one more spell, and then you crash in for six. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to need a few games under my belt to kind of start getting a feel for which one of those is better. Um, I like most of what's here in the sideboard. Uh, Carpet of Flowers, obviously pretty sick. Um, I will say I don't really know about Memories Journey. I'm pretty skeptical that that card's actually good enough, um, but we'll see if we end up boarding it in this league. All right, folks, before we get started here, I would really appreciate the likes. They really help out with the algorithm-based stuff, and if you're really enjoying my content or you want to try out this deck, check out the video description for the deck list and donation information. Let's battle. I've been given sort of a weird opening hand here. So I can careful study on turn one, discarding a Bloodgast and a Cabal Therapy, maybe a Phoenix if we're lucky, use that to find another land, play Thing in the Ice on two, and then try to treat Thing in the Ice as my primary game plan. I think that's okay, but uh, this is a little weird. I goldfished a handful of games before I got started here just to make sure if that, like, I had a feel for how the deck was going to work out, and I never kept a hand that looked quite like this one. I didn't find the land that I'm looking for. Uh, which is like daggers for multiple reasons. I want the land to bring back the blood gas, and I also want it to cast Thing in the Ice. And we can we can go ham with Thing in the Ice real quick. All 
All right, what degree of greed am I going for here? I think I need to make this line drop. All right, I have succeeded. Once upon a time can go back. I'm going to flip this thing in the ice like so freaking fast. We keep both Manamorphos for maximum velocity. I think I want the other stuff that's here too much. Weird. I think I want my Cabal Therapy to hit no matter what. I think I give up a little bit of blood gas value. All right, so I want black on this. And I need red or green, so I guess I'll grab Bayou. Now, if my opponent brainstorms here, ooh, no, 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 no. You don't let your opponent in Tomb. This is a longish pause for my opponent. Wonder what they are thinking about. Okay, my opponent had a daze, and they are dazing my thought sees. So since they didn't daze the Entomb, that makes me think that they have another one. So that's what I'm going to go with here. Yeah. Hmm. My thing in the ice is going to get... Taken with thought sees. Oh no. Now next turn they can animate that at Grizzle Brand, which is not good for me. But Grizzle Brand's not a horror. Grizzle Brand's a demon. So we'll see if I can get myself out of this situation. I only have two guaranteed spells next turn. It's rather risky for my opponent to draw cards since I have a thing in the ice in play. They'll probably draw one set because the upside of drawing uh, Unmask in particular is really high. All right, so let's start here. Guess I'll make blue black with this. That wouldn't cast another Metamorphose. I think I'm still supposed to do that. <clears throat> 
like two more spells. A Manamorphose would be pretty sick. Forcing a Brainstorm. Okay. We can still make this work. Do you see the line? I see the line. Seems dangerous. Do I play my land? Playing my land returns the blood ghast. Yeah, there's like some weird stuff that can happen, like with a Sire of Insanity, that makes me want to have this in play. I guess if I draw a spell, then I bounce this blood gas back to my hand. That's a little weird. Maybe I should have left it in my graveyard. My opponent has an Ashen Rider here. I am probably in trouble. Uh, Tides about Tyrant is, is the same sort of thing. My opponent can't reanimate that. They have to exhume or animate to dead it. I'm getting a longish pause from my opponent. All right, do you have a lotus petal or something? Oh, my opponent is just discarding. Damn it. <laughs> uh... This is one of the few draws that I have that doesn't just uh, crush the current board. I, I just needed any instant or sorcery. Fuck. So my opponent should handily have this game now. Like my entire board is going to get bounced. Yeah. If my second thing in the ice gets bounced, I'm just going to concede. All right, yeah. That sucks. All right. So I have a surgical. I have this memories journey, which I guess I'll play. Carpet's interesting. Both this is good. Area of Flame is interesting. Wing to Dust, I guess, is good. I have a weird assortment of Graveyard Hate.
I think I'm gonna drop one blood ghast. Entomb being able to entomb for one is fine. I don't think I like Carpet of Flowers here, because my opponent can pretty easily win the game on one or two lands, and they also probably have some basic swamps they can fetch to kind of play around it. I think I'm going to go down on Once Upon a Time. Okay, I'll go down one Cabal Therapy. Maybe I'll go down one land grant, something like that. Not exactly sure here. Eh. So I thought he's on turn one. I think in the ice on turn two. And then I'll have land grant plus careful study plus something else. I don't think this hand is amazing, but I also don't think it's bad enough to just go back. Do I take Thoughtseize? Leave them with no way of putting the Grizzlebrand into the graveyard? And on my turn, I can Entomb, Land Grant, Careful Study, Return of Phoenix. Entomb could just get forced. Uh, that's awkward. Drawing that land means it's harder to cast land grant for free. So if Entomb resolves, I'm really happy with that here. And if it doesn't resolve, that means I just work towards Thing in the Ice on my next turn cycle instead. My opponent thought about it for a while and then let it resolve. I'm going to grab the Arclight Phoenix. I'll cast the Careful Study. As long as I don't draw two lands, I'm golden here and I will get an Arclight Phoenix back. Discard one, two. I'll land grant. This will get me a red source. Already played my land. Now I go to combat. Get my phoenix. Send it in. Now, notably here, my opponent does have the opportunity to, like, animate that or reanimate a thing in the ice. They just rip and tomb. God damn it. That's really disappointing. They took their one way to get a fatty into the yard. And then they top-decked one. My opponent picked Grizzlebrand.
So I know my opponent has Force of Will. So I can't really play Thing in the Ice and expect it to do its thing. So I think I am supposed to just floop this into play and hope for the best. My opponent forces this. I don't know if I force back. All right, I don't have to figure that out. Because Thing in the Ice is how I get rid of Grizzlebrand. I will take that hit rather than block. is going to eat a force of will unfortunately oh nope great maybe next turn there's a world in which i can string together enough cantrips to flip this thing and spin the game but my opponent didn't force of will that, and they could have force of willed that. So I'm not sure exactly what that says about the current situation. I will need to cast one more spell than what I currently have access to. I theoretically have 10 damage next turn. I guess I theoretically have 12 counting Clothis. So, do I cast Ponder or Careful Study first? Probably Ponder. Probably ponder off of Tropical Island specifically. All right, now my opponent has a chance to get another creature into play. Nope, nope, they, oops, all grizzle brands. So Clothis plus thing of the ice damage is seven, assuming I can flip it. Uh, I don't think that is going to accomplish what you want it to accomplish. You untap the Grizzle Brand, but if I can cast a couple of spells, just get that creature out of play. Anyway. Like they probably have the resources to burn. I guess it's okay.
All right, they have Force of Will to my Ponder. Casting this, I can spike Cabal Therapy. And if I spike a Cabal Therapy, I get it all this turn. Is that fine? Probably fine. Ball therapy would be particularly good because I could like sacrifice something. I could sacrifice the Phoenix, put the Phoenix into graveyard, the thing in the ice transforms, bouncing the Grizzle Brand, and then I go to combat and the Arclight Phoenix returns. My opponent has force of willed the careful study. So this turn, I'll just block with the Arclight Phoenix. Just preserve my life total. Make sure I don't die to something stupid like uh, the two mana black spell that drains two. Collective Brutality. Notably, my opponent had all four of their Force of Wills. Now Alesh Norn is rough. So Alesh Norn kills my Arclight Phoenix while also simultaneously growing Grizzlebrand's power by 2 to exactly 8. Rough! Okay, uh, opening hand here is a little fair looking. I go turn 2 Thing in the Ice, and then I go Metamorphose under question mark. I'm on the draw. I think I'll keep this. I think there's a pretty good chance I just get a turn three, seven, eight that bounces my opponent's creatures. That's okay. What if my opponent made a Merit Lodge and I bounced it with a thing in the ice? How hot would that be? Feels like it would be hot. Alright, opponent's hand is good. You're one card too late. I'm not a basic land deck, right? Like, that's just not something... I have an island and a swamp, but I'm a four-color deck, so I probably don't get to do that thing anyway. Yeah, okay. I guess technically I should have ordered that differently so I could still have Force of Will available. Well, no, I guess I have another thing in the ice coming, so, like, if worse comes to worse, I can. There's only, like, one or two cards I would Force of Will. Like, I'd think about Valakut Exploration. Oh god, I'm dead. I should play Delta. Not gonna ponder. I think Thespian Stage should have copied something there. Even if it's just Taiga. Yeah, I mean, we're just getting 
crashed by Wasteland here, then my opponent makes Merit Lodge. Okay. So I want... This is going to be a game where it's really easy to overboard. Like, I'm going to want to fight against the Graveyard, which probably means this stuff, but maybe not Memory's Journey. Memory's Journey can be before, though, which is weird. And I guess the next question is, like, do I want Aria of Flame? I don't really think so. What can I safely cut? Maybe let's go down on Once Upon a Time here. The thought teases and therapies are a little awkward. It, because they're not going to have many targets. Or, and they're going to be weak cards after a turn or two. Maybe I go down on those. Alright, what about Force of Vigor? Probably not hard casting that easily, and... Pitch casting it isn't super easy either. It can steal some games. I go down on therapies more so than I already have. All right, what does it look like if I just like go down on almost all of these? I could keep Once Upon a Time to have more ability to pitch cast Force of Vigor against Valakut Exploration. I don't think this is a good matchup for me. Maybe I should be keeping Thought Seizes. I guess once upon a time... Can't land Grant in response, so that's awkward. Uh, so, like, this definitely has lands, but I don't know that this hand wins. It's missing so much right now. I think I'm going to ship this. This hand is also missing so much. Uh, which is unfortunate. Don't get to keep that. I yeah, don't get to keep that. I don't get to keep this. I, I think the card disadvantage is just quite bad here. All right, thing in the ice with no spells. What could go wrong? It's a great example. Great example of what could go wrong. Neither of these lands, notably, uh, work towards casting Bloodgast either. It also just makes my thing in the ice plan super questionable. Uh, since I'm already screwed if my opponent has a wasteland, I'm just going to play thing in the ice out off a non-basic instead of trying to fetch Swamp. Yep. And because Sphere is in play, all my uh, free cards are not going to be able to just uh, turn through and uh, do the thing in the ice thing. I guess we can uh, pretend that maybe this can happen.
Eight minute round. Okay, I have a kind of average looking hand that has the ability to dump an arc like Phoenix into the graveyard. I'm going to go ahead and keep this and hopefully we can just string together a couple of cantrips, get an arc like Phoenix back, and build the hand from there. We're going to be pretty bad against Wasteland. We're also going to be not great versus Thalia with the way this hand is looking. Um, do I want to play around Wasteland? Probably not. It's going to get me later anyway. I have two non-basics in hand. The thing is that the Wastelands and the Thalias are going to be pretty good against us. I think I need to just not play around them. I don't think I want to brainstorm here. I think I'll just ponder on my main phase. I need to get a land that produces blue here. I think I'm just going to grab another trop. I like the manamorphos of that, but I don't like most of the rest of what's there. If my opponent has anything that's super spooky, it comes down this turn. Like Thalia comes down this turn, Sanctum Prelate comes down this turn with a white land. Spirit of the Labyrinth comes down this turn. I don't think the timing of the Thoughtseize is ideal. Yeah, that's fine. I think I wait a turn on the land grant so it's easier to get back Arc Light, Arc Light Phoenix next turn if I can't fully flip thing in the ice. Yeah, that's fine. I am not at all concerned about that. This game could have been so much worse for me in so many different ways. My opponent's vials are going to make my thing in the ice flipping slightly worse. Backlaves and Flicker Wisps are pretty good against me. Hyrexine Revoker notably is a horror. Yup. I cast this now. While I don't have any lands in hand. Ooh. Let's try to fish for more arc like phoenixes this way. Actually, maybe I brainstorm first. I 
maybe I ponder first and specifically look for a phoenix. Drop, drop, bayou, taiga. Delta's not bad. Yeah, I think I will take Delta. Now I can fish for more phoenixes and then careful study. That's a little inconvenient. I think I'm just going to go ahead and get through that and flip thing in the ice. Uh, but I knew that sort of thing was a possibility going into this turn. I'll leave this back as a blocker. When it has sort of fire and ice, things get a little awkward. When it has another land, they get awkward as well. That's okay. I'm pretty well suited to just jump block with the Arclight Phoenix this turn and then bring it back next turn. I already have three spells available to me, and Brainstorm likely gets me a fourth. Although returning those creatures is uh, slightly awkward because my opponent does have a violet two and three. Hmm. Well, that's future Phil's problem. They're leaving up the possibility of bouncing or putting in a new piece of equipment. <clears throat> I have a basic swamp I can fetch. I can entomb, thought seize, brainstorm, and careful study. I can do it all. I guess I'll just start with the brainstorm. And the thing in the ice is really awkward here because I can like bounce all their stuff. But then like the flicker whisk comes back and resets the thing in the ice. A little miserable. Not like my discard helps that a ton.
Yeah, they're gonna get like Stoneforge plus Sword of Fire and Ice. Blink my thing in the ice again, or reset batter skull. I guess I could play towards them messing up, right? And not like doing things optimally. Kingdom for the lightning bolt, though. Rough. All right. Well, I successfully made Thing in the Ice go off two turns in a row. That is worth something. But now my opponent just gets, like, Sword of Fire and Ice and... Like they can put that on a batter skull, they can put that on a wisp. I'm gonna go ahead and concede this game here. This one is uh this one's locked up. So I have to expect that rest in peace will come in for my opponent. Oh, can I actually not just like point and kill a creature other than abrupt decay? I guess that's the case. All right. So I think I'm going to try to lean away from my graveyard a little bit and try to play a more controlling game. I think means these seven cards. So I can junk blood ghasts. I think I junk the cabal therapy package if those are going. And then trim a once upon a time. This leaves me able to play like the Arc Light Phoenix game, the Thing in the Ice game, or like the Aria Flame Clothes game. I think I like how that looks. After thinking about it a touch more, I substituted one land grant for one ancient grudge. Okay, I have a very fair looking opening hand that just has cards but this hand has no real game plan and if my opponent just played out a couple of creatures in a row i feel like i'm gonna fall behind i think i'm gonna try to find something that does something a little bit more objectively powerful i go though this produced blue or black i would keep this hand but it does neither yay five of these Uh, I don't feel like we're on the Phoenix plan right now. I don't like showing my opponent that I have a one lander, but this means that it has become a two lander. All right, so I now have the mana to cast this Aria of Flame, and hopefully it can go all the way. Yep.
All right. Please, no Thalia. I mean, honestly, a lot of things are really good against me. Thalia, Spirit of the Labyrinth, Wasteland, Port. I don't think I like this stuff. The land is fine, but I don't want two of these other things. Or even one of the other things. Having a little bit of uh, mana trouble here. Not having black in that exact spot is pretty bad for me. I don't think I have enough gas to just like burn out my opponent with Aria Flame afterwards. I have no cantrips currently. We get Athalia, Sanctum Prelate, Canonist. what my opponent digs out. They just decided on a Flicker Wisp. In which case, I am just going to take that rather than play out the Aria of Flame. Oh god. Uh, I can take the Flicker Wisp to stop the Recruiter Chains, but my opponent has, like, Skyclave for the Aria. They have a Canonist as well. Um... I don't I don't think I can realistically win from here. Yikes. Yeah, I am going to concede. I just I just don't see myself beating that. Like the Canonist is bad, that means the Arc Flight Phoenixes doesn't come back. They have Swords of Plowshares for a thing in the ice. They have Skyclave Apparition for the Aria of Flame. It's not happening. Okay, opening hand has a careful study, it has a phoenix, it has an entomb for another phoenix. I'll keep this. My opponent is playing a Yorian deck of some kind. I think I'm going for, you know, the big whammy turn, so to speak, on... Turn Get a blood ghast. Then I have on turn three Manamorphose, Careful Study, Cabal Therapy, Cabal Therapy very easily. I think I do get a blood ghast. Fauna has decided they don't like my thing in the ice. It'll be fine. Just a horror. When have horrors done anything wrong to anyone ever? Don't bring up any of those Phyrexian Revoker moments where I savaged people. Don't you do it. Assuming our opponent is on white, this is a fine source to Plowshares target, so... 
where the blood ghast is. Good with that. Ugh. Man. All right, how do I do this turn now? I really can't draw cards. And then my blood gas is gone. Ball therapy target you name force a will, I guess is my starting point. That's what I care about this turn. I know they have the counter spell, but I really care about force of will. All right. Now I can just land grant and grab a land. don't think it matters much. I don't have access to red yet, technically. Uh, actually, I'm not playing this land, right? I'm not playing this land, so I'll just pull a chop out of the deck. Nars at OP. A careful study. That flips the thing in the ice. I discard two cards. Go to combat. This attacks and kills Narset. This attacks and kills you. Now, let's finish the turn off. I Cabal Therapy. Sacrifice this. And name that Words to Plowshares. When you know it, we hit. My opponent is theoretically dead in two turns to this thing. But they have a decent number of redraws between the Abundant Growths and the Arrow. Now they have blue, blue, green, green. Which means that Arrow can come back next turn. Which puts my opponent out of a two-turn clock. Do much. Yeah, 
yeah, I, I think I'm going to end up being forced to hold back the Awoken Horror. Yeah, I just I just needed one more card here. I could force a will that that would be the game. I guess I can attack twice and just hope they don't have another creature. Like I attack them down to two. And they can't get back out of that range. Yeah, I guess that's the plan. I just don't think things are going to get better than me, because like eventually Yorian's going to come in and blink two Abundant Growths, and it's at least a draw two that will be recyclable. Ooh, we've gotten the block. Happy with that. <clears throat> and I just bounce that with Caracas and they gain six life per turn cycle as of right now. Uh, so many of the brews that I'm playing right now just like don't answer an Uro well enough to be competitive. Uh, Swords of Plowshares is on top of the deck. Because of Abundant Growth, they get to Swords of Plowshares, my idiot. Yep, I think I'm done. Yeah. Four cards in graveyard. I can put this in play and hope to bounce in a row. If I can bounce an Uro and then hit for 10 in the same turn cycle, like, maybe. Need a cantrip this turn. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna concede this game. Uh, this, this one is lost. Like, Yorian comes down next turn is a draw to Uro is right around the corner. Um, I think this is a deck that's pretty good at do dealing 20 damage. I don't think this is a deck that's good at dealing 30 damage. All right, carpets get in. Answers to Uro get in. Uh, ramping damage get in. I think Memory's Journey as an entombable answer to Uro is fine. I'm going to like focus on Uro so much that I'm just going to lose to the other things the deck has going on. I don't think I get to be the Force of Will deck here. Yeah, like the Blood Guests and Phoenix is just pale in comparison to Uro, just like the difference in card quality is huge. Alright. Go down the therapies, let's trim one blood ghast, and let's trim one land grant. See how that feels. I'm not uh 
super optimistic that we're going to come out on the right side of this. Um, most of the blue somewhat janky decks that I've tried recently, like the blue-red standstill deck, have just struggled to keep up with Uro since it's just one of the best things to be doing in the format. Uh, the mana doesn't work in this hand, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm going to do something that looks weird here. I'm going to cast a Thought Seize prior to a land grant, because if I land grant and my opponent sees my hand, they're going to fucking force a will a land grant and I will die. I'm going to take your Carpet of Flowers. That card is very good. And I am just going to cast this now. I want to make sure it resolves. I very much want Volcanic Island Forest. I so I want Trop. Yeah, I am so used to having one land in my deck when I play Land Grant, I didn't actually know it specifically looked for a forest. Beautiful. Ah, I mailed a phoenix too. Nice. Uh, unfortunately, I only have one land right now that casts cantrips. Uh, which means that stringing together multiple things in one turn to actually bring back the phoenix is pretty difficult. <clears throat> Well, the good news is that these lands, well, they, uh, they don't trigger carpet of flowers, so that's cool. If I draw a blue source, I have three spells in one turn. It's in Tomb, Ponder, plus Thought Scour. That's all, all fine. I guess I thought start with the thought scour. Is that true? If I ponder and find any land, it's better for me to ponder. Yeah, I mean, there's a land. That's fine. Double colors don't really matter. I just need something that's black. I guess blue-black matters more than anything else.
All right. For the record, I'm good if you terminus those away after I hit you for nine. A fair trade. Oh, actually, maybe Bayou was better because Bayou isn't an island for carpet of flowers. None of my opponent has to make a land drop in order to terminus. Okay, they had the land drop anyway. In which case, I like being able to string cantrips into cantrips. That's really important right now. Aria of Flame is ramping up quickly now. Fling to dust. Guess I'll grab that Uro now. That doesn't draw me a card, but it's quite useful. Um, and I won't cast this careful study yet. That card is just better when I have access to another card in hand. All right. As long as I can cast two spells. Oh, maybe I was supposed to cast the careful study last turn. I just cast it and then I cast Cling to Dust from Graveyard. Um, this should work too. All right, Cling to Dust officially won us a game. Yeah, my opponent saw the line there. Okay, so Aria of Flame looks good if we can answer Uro. Now I know that my opponent also has Monastery Mentor. I don't know that I get to Abrupt Decay, though. I don't think I do. Like, my opponent has an 80-card deck. I can't necessarily prepare for everything every game because I'm not a control deck. I'm really closer to a combo deck that is pivoting into a control role. I think I keep this hand. has a lot of graveyard-based shenanigans that I'm pretty happy with, and it also just doesn't fold to an Uro early. All right, pick Arc Light Phoenix. Don't know why uh, anyone thought I might have wanted to land there. That's ridiculous. Narset? Probably Narset.
Land Grant getting countered next turn would be sort of awkward. But casting Land Grant and returning Phoenixes next turn when there's a very good chance that my opponent can't fight back about it seems good. Like, my opponent's going to spend half their mana on Abundant Growths. Maybe all of their mana. Land Grant, Entomb, Entomb, attack for six. Maybe careful study, actually, over one of the Entombs. Drop, gain access to green, fine. You were going to brainstorm and look for a counter spell. Might have been better to do it in response to the land grant. My mana is... A choke point here. We could still just get surgical, which would be real rough too. Why do I even say it? That's pretty frustrating. I have one blood ghast in the deck still. Now I just need to find something like an aria of flame. Thank you, Entomb. Very nice. I think I'm just going to careful study at least one of those away this turn. Okay, these are, these are better cards. I mostly don't want my opponent to play like 
a planeswalker or a court or something of that nature. I can deal with an Uro because I have this memories journey in my graveyard. Uh, Yorian as a draw three is pretty awful. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I can clock faster than my opponent. But it's close. Sequencing was bad there. Just hope I don't get punished by drawing the blood gas exactly. Uh, that's not really a great draw. <clears throat> so I wanted to entomb after playing my land, I think. All right, that's not great. Now my opponent is going to have blockers for this bloodgast. I'm going to entomb in response to that. Just so that if my opponent counters, they don't get a monk token. I know, I know Thoughtseize will just get countered because my opponent has a Veil of Summer available currently. I think I'm going to try to save that for next turn. I'm just going to convert this into a card. I clicked enough cards. Could have thought seized, let it got countered, and then memories journey. So that's what I get for playing around the card that I knew about. I can flip everything back to my opponent's hand on their turn, but that means flipping back a Snapcaster Mage too, which is awkward. I 
I guess I could have cling to dusted Narset. See how bad this turn ends up being. Gonna block the Snapcaster Mage. It doesn't have prowess. So that should be pretty safe. That's inconvenient. They just bounce it with Caracas. I think my opponent's turn could have been much better if they sequenced differently. I think they should have done some of this stuff pre-combat. It's just instants and sorceries, right? Yeah. I'll just exile one of my own. No, I guess I can exile the Narset safely. One, two, three, four, five. The Carpet of Flowers is worth a lot. Yeah, I think I just thought sees my opponent here. Because they can't both Veil of Summer and Swords to Plowshare me. Great! I mean, uh, super happy that we took that down. Uh, I thought that situation was much worse than it actually was. Okay, this is a hand that goes turn one, careful study, then a phoenix. Turn two, thing in the ice, and hope that careful study draws us into things to bring the phoenix back or flip thing in the ice. I think I'll keep this. I don't exactly love this hand. But there's a handful of ways that this can come together. So I don't have black mana for cabal therapy right now. So, let's, let's do it. Uh, yeah. Really hoping for black mana or another phoenix there. It'd be very soft to a wasteland this game. Hopefully that's fine. Okay. Iga does not cast cantrips. Iga also does not cast cabal therapy. Cards also don't cast in Tomb. This, this casts stuff though. <clears throat> All right, regarding this Force of Will situation, I think the Force of Wills are my worst cards. Kind of. So there is this like 3000 IQ play 
where I cast like a Cabal Therapy, target my opponent, hold priority, force a will it, get back an Arc Flight Phoenix this turn. But I don't know that that's actually good. <laughs> so let's not. What does next turn look like? God, Tag is so fucking bad here. <laughs> Maybe I should focus on the thing on the ice and not on phoenixes right now. You don't named Ice Fang Kawaddle, holy shit. Oh, I see it's revealing Stomp and Bone Crusher Giant separately. Hmm. Okay. Ice Fang Kawaddles are awkward. What do I think about sacrificing my thing in the ice? I get all but one of their tutors. And then I return my phoenix. I trade with the one that's in play. And then I get another phoenix next turn, probably. All right, this turn went weird places. Oh, they got Taiga. Taiga does not contribute towards Ice Fang Coatl. Um, killing a Phoenix. My opponent's probably just gonna delve in the library here. They could Bone Crusher Giant, I guess. take the force of negation out of their hand. Um, I'll start by thought scouring myself, actually. I have a greater chance of hitting a phoenix while there's still three of them in there. Ooh. Like the cheap removal here. Bone Crusher and Jace left. No, 
Owl and Tomb. That gets me a new Arclight Phoenix. All right, I have a Cabal Therapy in my own graveyard. Do I want to use it? I can use it to take Jace or Bone Crusher Giant. I don't know that I care about either one of those cards a lot. Accordingly, I'm going to make my opponent spend mana on those cards if they want them. I'm actually, like, really firing on all cylinders this game. It's a shame this is, like, match five, but... Like, that was triggering Phoenixes. Two turns in a row. All right. If I attack in, I swing Quaddle blocks one, Bone Crusher Giant nugs the other. I probably need to slow my roll here now and not try to just aggressively kill my opponent. Well, let's ponder. If I ponder and find a spell, things end up being pretty sick. They're good. Oh, they just didn't respond. Oh, okay. Only bone crusher giant. All right, they force a negation on Jace left. So they will have to force of negation this or they'll die. Could have fetched. Oh no, they couldn't have fetched. Mana's bad. All right, that is now three turns in a row that I've, uh... done the Arclight Phoenix thing and returned them. My opponent goes to one. They need to use Sylvan Library in order to find something to answer Arclight Phoenix or otherwise gain them life. Okay. So, my opponent's playing a deck with a whole bunch of blue cards and Bone Crusher Giants. I saw a Chandra Awaken Inferno in a deck similar to this one, so that's something that's also going to be on my radar. I'm going to assume that the whole mid rangey plan becomes pretty good here, given how, like, graveyard-centric I just showed that I was, so I want this stuff for sure. God, the therapies felt fucking fantastic that game, though. From a Bloodgrast, from a Land Grant. Thing in the Ice becomes considerably more awkward against uh, Ice Fang Coatl specifically. It's like you bounce it, it, like they recast it as Death Touch, it draws them a card. I think I'm going to go down on that portion of things. I think I'll trim one Cabal Therapy. I'm not going to cut them this time. All right, what I want to do regarding Uro this game. I haven't seen it. I assume it's there. I'll probably regret it if I don't board for Uro in some way. I'm 
not go overboard until I see it. Let's board in two cards. And I'll go down a Thought Seize. And am I not a Force of Will deck here? Maybe I'm not a Force of Will deck. What if I do this? Then I can keep in the discard. Yeah, maybe that's fine. <clears throat> Is it carpet time? Not carpet time. <clears throat> I think I keep this. It's a weird one. Volcanic Island does not cast into me. Underground Sea would. I'm gonna entomb my opponent's end of turn. All right, maybe not anymore. <laughs> All right, I'm not even going to thought scour myself there. Uh, that's rewarding. Now I can cast this once upon a time for free. Bayou and Clovis are both insane. Very, very, very good. Um... I think I'm going to take Clothis and just use Land Grant to make my next two land drops. Land Grant still doesn't get Volcanic Island. I guess I'll use Polluted Delta to get Volcanic Island, and I'll use Land Grant to get me black mana of some kind. get a bayou. And I have all the colors. I've cast land grant and once upon a time. I want to make my opponent blow their relic. All right, double checking myself. Land grant once upon a time doom with all this turn. Yes. Okay. Relic has been dealt with. Next turn, what do I want to do? I think I just want to play Aria of Flame. So I think I'm just going to land grant here. Find another land. As long as it's blue, I don't think it matters too much what it is. That scour is fine. Yeah. 
all in all, pretty solid turn cycle. I'm happy that the relic's gone. Like now I have Clothis and Aria of Flame as like very, very reasonable things to be fucked. Okay. Um, I was not expecting that. All right. I'm not dead to that, technically. Pretty close to dead against that. I have Mana Morphos. Mana Morphos is a thing. I have two basic lands, I have Mana Morphos. That's scary though. I don't even think I get to like abrupt decay for Blood Moon next game because I'm going to be so bad at casting decay under Blood Moon. I think I leave this back to trade with Hull Breacher. If that's something my opponent is willing to do. Great. I think I get attacked for six and then six and then nine and die. I go ahead and toss in the towel here. Like, we're not, uh, not getting out of this exact situation. All right, so now I know my opponent has Hull Breachers, which are, are terrifying. And now I know that my opponent also has Blood Moon, which is terrifying. What do I want to do about this? Like, Abrupt Decay is very good against Hull Breacher and technically a thing against Blood Moon. I don't know that I changed my boarding, though. Like, I think I'm, I think I'm kind of the metaphorical beatdown, so I think I want to do my thing before my opponent does their thing. I think if it gets to my opponent's turn three and I'm already not decently far ahead, there's a problem for me. Okay. I can go... Taiga, pass. No. I can go Swamp, pass. Next turn, once upon a time, find Blue Land, Careful Study, then Phoenix, and then draw one other card that does something? That might be too much work for a 3-2. A mulligan. This hand looks good. I'll keep this. Toss this back. I'll play Bayou and pass. I'll entomb. Well, will I? I might not entomb. I might just go Manamorphose, Entomb, Ponder, all on the same turn, and then that returns an idiot with no risks associated with it other than counter spells. All right, yeah, let's do that. I get Volk. I'm not going to play around Blood Moon.
now I'll save my future stuff for Aria of Flame rather than doing anything else in this turn cycle. Yeah, so the issue is that if I get Island in order to play around Blood Moon, then I'm much worse at actually casting Aria of Flame. Which is my contingency plan for if things go wrong, and they go wrong some portion of the time. Alright, so my opponent has stopped me from doing my thing two turns in a row. Yeah. Why not ponder before relic though? Just a huge fan of making your decisions with the maximum amount of available information. Maybe I just do this. I think I have to get my hits in where I can. And then maybe my opponent spends a turn like answering this Phoenix and then exiling it or something, and that would be a win for me. Alright, message received. Find an answer to Uro immediately or lose. Got it. I ponder first. Just look at the maximum four cards. Memory's Journey is in the sideboard currently. The Entomb does not do it here. I'm going to shuffle away this careful study. In all likelihood, hey, this ain't bad. I guess I'll take the whole breacher. I'm just going to do this now while I know this is safe. Oh, shit, that was on board. All right. I guess it still accomplishes my point, though. I would have done it anyway. I just thought my opponent was going to let that happen, though. Like, the Relic in play seems more valuable to me than the Uros in deck. Maybe I'm wrong, though. The opponent is past the point where they want to Blood Moon me. Don't Hellbreacher me. Yeah, that's fine.
So now I want like a Clothis or an Aria, or I guess another Arc Light Phoenix is fine too. But I feel like this current scenario is favoring my opponent. Given that, I think I will attack with the Phoenix. Like, now I have something else that can get chip damage now that the snake's out of the way. Still got all these other snakes, though. Ugh. Well, that's uh, that's not a real card right now. That ooze is devastating. Uh, seems like you should have fetch to eat for ice fang, eight ice fang quaddle, or like fetch to keep my graveyard down because you've been very conscious about doing that thus far. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong about where their priorities are at. But it seems like with multiple fetch lands in play, there's very little cost to fetching and eating this. I'm just dead to Uro here. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh and concede here. That game is just over, unfortunately. Okay, um overall thoughts on the deck. I I feel like the mana base for this deck needs to be greedier than it is, and I don't say that very often. I, I, I don't think this deck consistently casts all of its spells well enough, especially when you want to be casting three things in a turn. So, in reality, this is a deck that often has requirements like blue, blue, black in a single turn cycle. And when that sort of thing happens, the lands you have, like Island and Swamp and maybe Taiga, that don't contribute to casting some of those spells, uh, end up feeling pretty bad. Um, the same is also true of Bayou a little bit. But like, Bayou doesn't cast the first, you know, 12 or 14 cards here. And the same is true of Taiga. Swamp doesn't cast these as well. Um... So, ultimately, I don't really know how to fix this mana base. It feels like maybe just getting rid of Swamp and Island and just getting even greedier with more dual lands might smooth things out a little bit some portion of the time. It's like, you're always going to be very bad against Wasteland, I think. And I don't know what por portion of the time you really get to play a slow game where you just go, like, island and swamp. And you, like, don't need the red at all, or you don't need the green at all. Um, maybe I'm fetching suboptimally, and I'm respecting the ability to cast some of these cards more than I should. Um... But I don't know. I don't feel like the mana is quite there yet. There's also like 
five color options and you could try to build a mana base closer to that of like say rainbow depths but the games end up being a little grindy in the post sideboard games so i don't know if you can afford like some pain lands or something um, I also don't know that you can afford something like a Triome that taps for three colors because coming in tapped is such a big deal. Um, but I'd be wanting to explore that. Um, overall, I don't really know how I feel about Bloodgast. Bloodgast used to be this thing that you could play against control decks and like it would be super, super annoying. But right now, a lot of the control decks are in white and Graveyard Hate is relatively popular because of the like omnipresence of Uro. And, like, because of Uro, like, the two damage a turn that a Bloodgast does it feels a lot less impactful. I might be looking at, like, trimming down to one Bloodgast or getting rid of the Bloodgasts entirely. Um, it was not overly impressed. Like, the coolest thing it did, I think, was just uh, sacrifice itself to Cabal Therapy. Um, as far as Thought Scour versus Once Upon a Time goes, I think I like Thought Scour better, mostly because... Once Upon a Time is free only on turn one, and on turn one, it's incredibly unlikely that you're going to be returning phoenixes. Uh, it can happen, but it's very rare that that's going to happen. And so this is a two-mana card late game. I think I like Thought Scour better. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, I like this whole, like, Clothis Aria of Flame plan. Um... I'm not 100% comfortable with, like, when I should and should not be playing the Memories Journey. Uh, like, it's an entombable answer to Uro, which is cool. But every time that you board for an Uro deck, you're usually boarding in at least, like, these six cards for the mid-range plan and at least two other Graveyard Hate cards. So is that really supposed to be, like, nine-ish cards you're playing for these Uro decks? And then, like boarding in stuff like this becomes less feasible. Uh, this is definitely a deck where, like, if I was going to play this in another league, like, and, and do it, like, very seriously, um, I would need to sit down and, like, map out a sideboard map, right? And, like, figure out, like, how am I going to approach these, like, handful of top Euro decks? Um, overall, this was a fun deck. Like, it's cool. Um, I don't know that this deck is good enough at dealing like 30 or 40 damage to the point where this is a competitive strategy right now. Um, a lot of decks, I think, like Burn, for example, that are really looking to deal 20 points of damage in a game, like they're looking to do a thing, get aggressive, end the game immediately. I don't know how viable those sorts of decks are right now, just because like there's so much Uro running around. And I feel like, you know, putting six or nine power into play via art like Phoenix is like super cool. But on your more anemic hands, where you put, like, an Arclight Phoenix into play, that doesn't feel as good as what Uro is doing. All right. Uh, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, you know, please throw me a like or a comment, or maybe both. Both would be cool. Um, and if you're really enjoying my content or you want to try out this deck yourself, remember the video, sorry, the deck list is always available in the description, as is the uh, donation information. Have a great rest of the day.